This morning we start our journey into what is called the narrative lectionary. It's a story, and it's our story. It's God's story. It's everybody's story. It leads us through this through um, the Old Testament up until we get to to Christmas at the birth of Christ. At the birth of Christ, we'll journey into Christ's life until we get to the resurrection, and then we'll journey through the life of the apostles and disciples after Jesus. But today's lesson starts with the beginning and this, this is for Clyde <laughs> Clyde the did you know that there's a baseball game in the Bible I only know about the one right there in the, in the reading pull up the reading in the big inning <laughs> <laughs> You missed first base. <laughs> right? This morning's lesson is all about God creating, and God created what? Everything. Everything. And how long did it take him? How long did it take him? Say it louder. Seven. He rested on the seventh. The seventh day is just as important as the other six. Now, these six days, are they six days? Or are they, is day a, a word that doesn't mean day like we know it means day? Is it six actual days or is it six periods of time? And before anybody says one way or the other, the answer is yes. yes. <laughs> and then the next question is, does it even matter? No. no. Why does it not matter? <laughs> because I said no. <laughs> Is, that is never the right answer. <laughs> write it. Write it down. I'm going to say it here. You might. You, are you recording? I'm actually recording this. I am not always right. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My wife could have told you that a long time ago. <laughs> right? It's not because I said so. But do the six days actually, does it matter how long it took God to create everything? No. It doesn't really matter. See, the important things we need to learn about this story is, is, is this story is about the beginning of time. It's about creation and it's about God being there and God doing something that caused things to happen. That caused the worlds to be created. That caused light and darkness to be created. That caused planets and stars to be created that caused every tree and every animal, even the bees, to be created, and even mosquitoes, really, why do we need them to be created, right? And here's the next question, another interesting question to this story. Who did the creating in this story? Who? God. And? Jesus. Was Jesus there? No. no. I got no's and yeses. Which one is it? This one is a... Three and one. John one. Okay, but here's the, the... John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Nothing was created except the, that which was created through Him, and what He created was a life and a light. Right? That's Pastor Jerry's um, quick rendition of chapter, chapter 1 of the Gospel of John, the first five verses. Right? So according to John, in the beginning, the Word was there. And who is the Word? God. Who is the Word? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the Word. God is not the Word. The Father is not the Word. Jesus is the Word. See, here's, here's the thing you have to, you, you have to think about. And, and the answer to my question, was Jesus there, is yes and no. Because the answer to that question is, whose perspective are you looking at this from? Because whose text is this really? Who was this text written to? The Jews. When? Anybody have a clue of when this 
was written a long time ago. About <laughs> roughly during the time of the Babylonian exile, about 600 BC, actually, is probably when the book, this part of the book of Genesis, was written. And it was written to the to the Jews because the Babylonians were telling them that their God was nothing. And, and they needed to be reminded that their God created everything, right? The God of the Jews was the God that created everything in the world. And the Babylonians were trying to get them to understand that, no, your God isn't anything because you're, you're our slaves now and you belong to us. So your God means nothing. You need to worship our gods. Somebody reminded the Jews. That Yahweh spoke into existence everything that is. So from a Jewish point of view, Jesus wasn't there. It was God and their one God. But from a Christian point of view, that's different. We'll get to that in a minute. But back to my original question, which Brody answered part of. He said, God created, but who else created in this reading, God, there, God, God, I heard God, did I hear God over here? Who else created in the reading? Jesus. Not Jesus. Not the Spirit. No, not the word. The reading. Read the reading. The animals. Who else? The birds. The plants didn't. Kind of they did. The fish did. The plants kind of did. The water. The water. Water brought forth creatures. And the earth brought forth trees. And every type of vegetation. God said, I created the earth. And then he said, now let the earth bring forth. So when God rested on the seventh day, did creation stop? No. See, that's the thing. Creation is not a one and all time event. That's why it may not be six days or seven days as we know them. Right. And here's the here's the hang up that we get on on this text. Right. We want to say that the Bible says it was six days and that's all that there was. But does the Bible actually tell us how anything was created? Not in a technical standpoint. It actually does tell us how things were created because God spoke and the word for spoke or called out to or in that sense, is in this passage so many more times than create or make or anything else. God spoke into existence the world. But that doesn't tell us how things were created. And here's, here's my understanding on this, and you may disagree with this. And that's why I tell you before I say that, that this is my understanding on this. That science and the Bible are not contradictory to each other. Because science tells us how things happen, and the Bible tells us who did it. Right? <coughs> Science tells us how. The Bible tells us who. God created. God spoke into existence everything. And as Christians, we can see, right? We get back to this. The Jews see it as God created. As Christians, we read it that all three were there. And how do we see that? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What is the reading? I don't actually have this one memorized. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. What is wind? Spirit. spirit. Remember that. The word for wind in Hebrew and in Greek means spirit. It means wind. It means breath. Later on this year, we'll get to the story of the dry bones in Ezekiel. And God breathed into them. And when God breathes into them, they get the spirit, right? So the word for wind is also the word for breath. It's also the word for spirit. So in the beginning, while the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the spirit from God swept over the face of the waters, and then God... Yes, yes. What did God do? God spoke. He said. And, and when you say something, what do you use? Words. What? 
Yes, but not the answer I'm looking for. <laughs> so, so wrong. <laughs> when you speak, you use breath, but you also use words. So in the beginning, when the earth was a formless void and the spirit of God swept over the face of the water and then Jesus said, let there be light. Because John 1 says, in the beginning, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Nothing was created except for Him, and He created life and light. We had a Bible study on this this past Wednesday, and the answer just came to me. I asked the question, on day one, God created light, and He separated the light from the darkness, and it was evening, and it was morning the first day. But when was the sun created? The sun was not created on the first day. On the fourth day, actually, I think it is. Right? We went through this the other day. I said it wrong a couple times. Fourth day, the sun and the moon were created. So how is there light without the sun? How is there light without the sun? Because Jesus created it. God is the light. Right? God is that light. And anything that is not a part of God is darkness. And in this reading that is so confusing and makes us just want to wonder about why it's here. We have to remember that it's here because it shows us how God is involved in each and every one of our daily lives. It shows us how God has empowered us to be a part of the creating force of this world. And it shows us how much God has blessed each and every one of us. Because it comes to, to the people of Israel in a time that they were being told to forget about God. And it comes to us in a way that shows that God is here to give us rest and to help us understand who we actually are. And that in Him, we can have light and we can have life and we can have it abundantly. This reading shows us the beginning of not only God's story, but of our story. And it's a blessing to us. Because in this we can see how God loves us and takes the time to be with us. Because if God wanted to, God could have just said, boom, let it happen. And everything could have been created in an instant. But because it's broken down in time... God enters into our world and shows us that he's willing to take the time to make his creation be what he needs it to be. God is willing to give you the time to understand who you are as his child. God is willing to put in the time to see that his creation comes to understand who he is and how he wants to be involved in the lives of everything that happens in all of his creation. So read this story and understand the blessing that it gives to you. And read this story and understand how God is showing you His love through everything around you. And be, read this story and understand that God is not ever going to give up on you. Because He's already put in the time to make you. He's going to put in the time to keep reforming you and shaping you into the person that He needs you to be. This story shows us how much God has blessed us. And how much God actually loves each and every one of us. And every one of his creatures. So live in that light. And be a part of that blessing. And help others see the love that God has given them. 